Hello, I'm Greg Hurst, and I'm a math content developer at Wolfram Alpha. In this talk, I'll give a quick intro to Wolfram Alpha and demo the Wolfram Problem Generator. So what is Wolfram Alpha? Wolfram Alpha is an engine for computing answers and providing knowledge. It's a place to type a question in plain English and get an answer. This is different from a search engine, however, because Wolfram Alpha uses its own knowledge base and its own data, rather than just crawling the web and providing links. This means it's possible to ask a question that's never been answered and get an answer. So let's see some examples. If we navigate to wolframalpha.com slash examples, we're taken to this page and we can see that there are a lot of links from to choose from and it's really fun to explore all that Wolfram Alpha has to offer but for us let's focus on algebra so if we go to the mathematics section and click algebra we're taken to another page that has a lot of examples to choose from so let's start off simple and choose this linear system okay so we want to solve x plus y equals 10 and x minus y equals 4 and Wolfram Alpha is able to do this we see we're provided with the solution 7 and 3 and not only that but a plot so it's plotting both lines we can actually see where they intersect so when x is 7 y is 3 they intersect and what's really cool is up in the, the solutions pod we have this nice step-by-step -step button where we can actually see the steps to obtain the answer. So here we're solving by elimination, but what's really cool is up in the top right, we can pick our method. So let's say I want to solve by substitution instead. Not a problem. So in this example, we can solve by elimination, substitution, Gaussian elimination, or Kramer's rule. So in this previous example, to reiterate, the solution to the system was given, a visualization was provided, and we also have step-by-step -step solutions. This enables students to learn at their own pace and to solve kind of how they would want to solve. We provided multiple methods for this reason. How about another example? Let's take a look at this cubic polynomial. So Wolfram Alpha will automatically generate a report about this polynomial about seemingly anything we would want to know about it. So we have plots, alternate forms, roots, properties such as domain, range, this is a surjective function, max and min, and some more stuff. And what's really neat is the curious student can actually click the step-by-step -step button here and see how to find the roots. So let's solve this general cubic equation here with Wolfram Alpha. So I clicked show all steps and at the very bottom we have our answer. So that's pretty nice. But let's say I, I had a more specific query. Let's say I just wanted the plot. Well, if I told it to plot, that's okay too. Again, we can just enter the query in plain English and get an answer. So it's okay if we want to drill down and get even more specific. Let's say we want it to plot from 0 to 4. Well, Wolfram Alpha can handle this too. Or let's say we wanted to compare the plots of two functions. So let's choose the same polynomial and a slightly modified one, we're going to change the quadratic term to minus 5. Now we're provided with a plot of both. So now we can see if we modify this cubic polynomial by just a bit, how much it actually changes. So in summary here, Wolfram Alpha automatically generated a report 
on the properties that we would want to know about this polynomial. But it's okay to drill down and ask for more specific queries, such as to plot or compare plots or any other properties. Okay, so that's Wolfram Alpha. Now let's move on to the Wolfram Problem Generator. Now the Wolfram Problem Generator is pretty much the inverse of Wolfram Alpha. With Wolfram Alpha, you ask it a question and it gives you an answer. Well, with the Wolfram Problem Generator, it asks you a question and you give it an answer. So it's a website where you can decide the mathematical topic to practice and we'll provide you with questions. We offer three difficulty levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And hints and step-by-step -step solutions are provided along the way if someone gets stuck. Additionally, you can access your history to see the questions you've gotten right or wrong. And we also can provide printable practice quizzes with answer keys. One more cool thing is that the Wolfram Problem Generator is unique because we don't just pull questions from a reservoir we've created, we actually randomly generate the problems on the fly. This way you're guaranteed to get problems that you've never seen before. So let's check it out. If we go to wolframalpha.com slash problem generator, we're taken to the main page. As you can see here, we have six topics to choose from currently. We have arithmetic, number theory, algebra, calculus, linear algebra, and statistics. Now each subtopic covers the common core standards very closely. So let's actually take a look at an, at an example. So let's, let's choose arithmetic and let's see what we have here. We have arithmetic over the integers so we can add, subtract, etc. or arithmetic over fractions. So let's actually practice. Let's go ahead and practice addition. Alright, so we're taken here. What do we have? We are posed with a question. What is 13 plus 5? Alright, so let's say we think the answer is 17. The nice thing about the problem generator is it uses Wolfram Alpha's parsing capabilities so we can enter that in in English. 17 and it gave us an interpretation of the actual number 17. That's nice. Okay, well, unfortunately I got this one wrong. So when I get it wrong, a nice hint is provided. So it's telling me I should use long addition and to add the digits in the ones column. Okay, so now it provides me with the addition template here. So now that things are lined up better, I can see where I made my mistake. I need to add three and five, and that's eight. So the answer is 18. Awesome, so I got it correct. Now notice here, the phrasing changed too. So the phrasing will change for every question just a little bit, just so students don't get used to the same question phrasing type. Okay, so what is 17 plus 3? Okay, well that's 20. Cool. 20 plus 3 is 23. Okay, 21 plus 5. Okay, let's say that's uh, 27. No, so I'm provided with the hint again. Okay, 1 plus 5. Okay, oh yeah, so let's say I think it's 25 now. Okay, I'm still wrong. So now if I'd like, I can access the step-by-step -step solution and actually get hints and steps, as many as I want. Okay, so add the digits in the ones column. Okay, okay, 1 plus 5 is 6. Okay, that's where I went wrong. Okay, so I can access as many hints and steps as I want till I actually understand where I went wrong. And what's really cool is we have multiple methods here. So in this case, I could also think of this as number line addition. Okay, so I have to hop 21. Okay, then I have to hop 5 over. So I landed at 26. Okay, so 26. Okay, so let's just do one more, and let me get this one wrong on purpose. Okay, so after the third try, it considers it a wrong answer. 
and the step-by-step -step box automatically comes up so I can access the solution. So here we default to number line, but another method is through math manipulatives. Okay, and with these, we just provide blocks. So let's draw eight blocks. Let's draw seven more. How many blocks do we have? Well, we have to count. We have 15. Okay, so I got that one wrong. Now, if we scroll to the bottom, we can actually see our history. Okay, so I've gotten four out of five correct here. Uh, and if I hover over a problem, we see these little X's here. These are all the tries I had. I got all three tries wrong. And if I hover over them, we can see my first answer was one, then two, or three. Or here, I thought it was 27, then 25, and then, okay, I finally got it right here with this purple check mark. I guessed, or I answered 26 and got that one correct. Okay. So now what else do we have on this page? Well, up here in the upper right, we can choose our difficulty level. Okay, so I got four out of five right, so I'm pretty good at addition here, so let's let's bump it up to advanced. Okay, so now it's asking me to add 504 plus 464. So we see that the number of digits has increased. So let's see, that's 968. Awesome. Okay, so we see in the advanced section, not only do the problems get harder, but the text gets harder too. We're no longer provided with the numerical values to add, but we're provided with them in word form. So what is 474 plus 344? Okay, so what do we have here? We have 474 plus 344, 344. Okay, so I had to take that extra step and actually write it as a number. Okay, so this is actually a good example here because, okay, technically, this is the right answer. But we still consider it wrong. Okay. So another thing to look at is this, are these buttons here. We can generate a printable problem sheet for you, as was mentioned before. And what's nice is we have two options to choose from. We can choose from our history. So let's say I didn't do too hot here. You know, let's say I got a pretty low average, so I want to repractice these problems. Well, that's okay. I can click this button and it'll generate a multiple choice quiz for me over the same problems that I missed, so I can practice them again. Let's actually just make a random set though. So it's creating, please wait. And here we are. So we have a random multiple choice test generated over arithmetic level advanced. So we are given 20 questions. And what's nice about the multiple choice uh, here is we have um, curated common mistakes that are made in these topics. And they will appear as multiple choice um, answers. So we could go ahead and click download and print if we wanted. We could also access the answer key and print that too. So if you're a parent giving your kid a quiz or, or a teacher giving a student a quiz, you can print out both the problems and the answer key. So that's nice. All right, let's, uh, let's go back home. And let's actually look at the other topics. So we've seen arithmetic. Now we have number theory. So these are things like divisibility tests or factoring an integer, GCD, things of that nature. Our biggest section currently is algebra. So we can do arithmetic over the radicals or over complex numbers such as dividing by a complex, which is multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate, things like that. Or we can um, look at polynomials. We can expand, factor, evaluate, and so forth or we can solve equations, so linear equations, quadratic equations, equations with radicals. Or what about some calculus? We can practice our derivatives or integration skills. Linear algebra, we can add, subtract vectors and matrices, take the determinant of matrices, and with 
with statistics, we can find the mean, median, and mode, and range of a list of numbers. So we're currently working towards adding more and more content to this, so stay tuned for that as well. So let's actually look at another example here. Let's actually go ahead and do the chain rule. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to skip until I find a certain problem I'm after. Okay, how about this one? Let's find the derivative of the cube root of log x. Now I chose this example for a reason to show why it's nice to have the input interpretation. A lot of times it's hard to enter an exponent, say, and maybe another online math website wouldn't tell you that you entered it wrong. Okay, so let's actually do this example. Okay, so what's the derivative of cube root of log x? Well, it's the chain rule. So the derivative of log x is 1 over x times, okay, the derivative of cube root, that's something to the one-third. So we pull out the exponent, and now we multiply by the thing on the inside to the one, to the exponent minus one. So that would be minus two-thirds. Okay, so I think I'm right because I talked it out. Okay, but it says I'm wrong. So what did I do here? Oh, look at this. The two-thirds is not showing up in the exponent. Okay, so the input interpretation is telling me that I need to fix that. So I'll go ahead and put parentheses there. And cool, I got it right. Okay, so in summary, basically Wolfram Problem Generator is just a great tool for practicing math problems to really reinforcing your skills. So thanks for listening to my talk. I hope you enjoy Wolfram Alpha and the Wolfram Problem Generator.